Hey everyone, this is Kirk here again from OptionAlpha.com and in this video I want to talk about a question that I get often and that's is fundamental analysis completely dead and, and really kind of the death of fundamental analysis as it relates to trading options and trading stocks. And so we know that with such efficient and liquid markets here in the US that question can be posed and I think it's a valid question to ask and I, I'm not trying to, uh, you know, rain on anyone's parade that that loves fundamental analysis but but it's a valid question to be asked and we need to go through it so here are my thoughts having worked on both sides of the chinese wall both as an m a analyst in investment banking and then also as a reit research analyst on the other side and so for those of you who don't know what the chinese wall it's kind of this divider in companies that that they have and it's not a physical wall though sometimes it can be a division between floors or or workspaces but it's this idea that there's two sides of the business. There's the private side of the business, which I was part of in M&A, where we were structuring uh, you know, merger and divestor uh, deals with companies, and then also the public side of the business that doesn't have access to that private information when companies are going to join together or uh, you know, sell off one of their assets. And that's that REIT research side. So that's where I was asking uh, you know, questions and working on a team that would talk to CEOs and CFOs about, you know, kind of future projections. And we would publish research on where we expected a stock to go in the future and why and what were the underlying conditions. So it was a lot of fundamental analysis and it really had nothing to do with technical or, or, or options probabilities or statistics. It was it was all fundamental at that point. So I think I've got a pretty good idea of, of how that works, having worked both sides of, of the uh, industry. So the first thing I'll tell you is that it's not dead if you're a long-term value investor. And I think, look, there for me, it, it's a no-brainer that I don't use fundamental analysis anymore, but that doesn't mean that you can't be aware of your surroundings, right? And and sometimes people talk about it in, you know, just having kind of an understanding of what's going on in the market. So if you're trading, let's say, JCPenney, but they might end up filing for bankruptcy or something, or they have some, you know, important board meeting about selling the company. I mean, there's got to be some sort of understanding that you have. And I think if you're a value investor or somebody that's going to be in a particular stock for a long time, then maybe some of those fundamentals are important. How quickly is the company growing? Is their market share growing? Is their margins growing? Is their revenue growing? Uh, some of the things that you can ask are definitely important. And, and obviously, so it's not dead in that in that sense. Number two, though, is that the community of advisors that are out there and financial advisors, both private financial advisors, public financial advisors that are you know seen on CNBC, I kind of throw everyone into that advisor category. Anybody who's got an opinion on the market, they typically don't ever have their interests aligned or they don't have a vested interest in whatever they're talking about. And I think as a community and as an industry, it's such a bad thing that when I was working in, in REITs, you know, as an analyst, we could never have, uh, you know, ownership in the companies we covered. And and I get it to one, on one side of it that you don't want to have ownership in that company because it would taint your investment. But at the same time, I got to have a little skin in the game. You don't have any vested interest in how well this company does. It's, you know, it just doesn't really give you, you know, put you in a good position to make a, a smart decision. And I think often people will talk about, and I'll hear this all the time on the news or in media, you know, you should go out and buy this company, uh, but then they don't go out and buy it, right? Or you should go out and buy that company, but then they don't go out and buy it. And it's such a huge disservice to this industry as a whole that advisors don't have the same vested interest and alignment. And I think it becomes more of a game of seeing who can collect and open as many new accounts and have kind of quote unquote money under management and where it shouldn't be uh, anything about that. Number three is that as options traders, we're trading shorter timelines. Though we're not day trading, we're not day traders in the sense of we'll be in and out in in you know the same day. We will be maybe in and out in you know a week or two weeks. We're position traders, but that means that on a shorter time frame, how well can fundamental analysis really help us? And and it really doesn't. It's more about volatility, short term overbought and oversold areas. Uh, of support and resistance, that has much more of an impact on what we do for our timeline than fundamental analysis does. Number four is what I call disruptors like Amazon that are moving quicker than ever into new territory. And I'll use this example, but Netflix was one of the first movers, if you will, kind of the, the quickest mover into the space of you know, offering this digital streaming content. Well, Amazon's got a huge subscriber base 
And they quickly came in and took a huge chunk out of Netflix customer base by having their own Amazon Prime and video streaming. So in this day and age, markets are so efficient and companies are so efficient that they can quickly overtake someone else's territory. Whereas most people may have thought that Netflix had kind of the end all in digital streaming media online, they quickly found out that Netflix or that Amazon can come in and some other players like Redbox now, they can come in and, and disrupt and move the momentum of that company. And so I think as a fundamental investor, if you're looking at that, that's hard to see those moves coming in. And in most cases, most of that should be priced in anyway. All right, and so number five here is that markets are frankly so efficient now and so efficiently priced that when news hits from a company, it's not worth chasing. And the end result here is that markets are so fast. And if you're trading liquid underlying stocks, as we suggest, things like Apple and Google and Microsoft and, um, and Intel, those companies have so many people covering them and there's so much information out there that it's virtually impossible for you to gain an edge by having some sort of fundamental analysis information. So think about it this way. If you read as a retail investor, as somebody just like me that's, you know, we're not in the market, we don't have insider information on any of these companies, but if we see a new story that hits maybe the front page of Yahoo or maybe hits, you know, a Google blog or something like that, and maybe some company that we're looking at, you know, just got an FDA approval. Well, by the time that it gets all the way through the channels to somebody writing it up and putting it online or talking about it on a media show or something like that, or even on radio, by the time it gets through all of those channels to the point at which you hear it, read it, or see it, somebody else has already taken advantage of that. Information is so quickly priced and so efficient in our markets, it's not worth chasing. So what we have to do as traders is realize that fundamental analysis can play a role in longer term investing, but as options traders, we completely need to avoid it and, and just have a little bit of market understanding. We need to have our head you know, kind of on a swivel and just know what's going on, but we don't need to be looking at PE ratios and, and cash flow analysis. It, it doesn't matter and, and frankly, I haven't used it in eight years and I've been doing just fine without using it. So I think when we talk about this question of is fundam fundamental analysis dead, I think that it's not completely dead, but I think it's com it's dying as it relates to options traders and stock traders who are going to be a little bit shorter term in the market. So as always, if you guys have any questions or comments, please add them right below this video lesson. And until next time, happy trading.